that uh, Isolde physicists, at least for uh, those involved in the high energy program, had been waiting for this uh, upgrade for about uh, more than 10 years. From biomedical applications to nuclear astrophysics, using a complex infrastructure and cutting-edge experiments, the men and women of Isolde push forward our understanding of our universe. This is High Energy Physics at Isolde. Isolde is always developing. Equipment moves on and off the hall floor. New groups start and end experiments regularly. Visiting scientists come and go, and experiments evolve. So it was a natural step for Isolde to expand from its core low energy science into high energies. This is how the idea for High Isolde was born. The HIE Isolde project, or commonly referred to High Isolde, involved two aspects. One is the high intensity, so for the eye and the high energy upgrade. These are uh, basically two aspects of the project which are, have been carried out in parallel. And that built uh, basically on the use of uh, novel technology, uh, superconducting RF and material science. So for us, for the project, the task was rather challenging in the sense that we could not increase the size of the uh, building anymore, of the experimental hall. So then the only possible upgrade was to increase the energy of the post-accelerated beams and to do that in such a way that it could fit in the existing uh, uh, hall, experimental hall, and also in order to make use of the future upgrades of the LHC injectors, namely the LINAC4, which will be capable of uh, delivering more intense protons. High Isolde had many challenges, but as the project began to take shape, Finding and funding people to develop the design and technologies was the biggest one. This uh, problem was faced with um, the idea of uh, asking uh, for a network, for a European network that was successfully given. This gave us the opportunity to really hire uh, students and postdoc. And I think in that way it was a very good solution because it gave to these students the opportunity to get the education from CERN, CERN the opportunity to do uh, knowledge transfer. Of course, this type of things has a certain disadvantage. The first one is that you have to delay partially the project because you have a, a learning curve that has to be assumed in the project by the learning of the students. Even if you take the best of the best, they have to learn. And the second is, of course, that you have to face the fact that it's a limited time, that they do very well their duty, and that we have to find a backup for the transfer of the things they have achieved into the existing CERN personnel. By hiring students to complete the bulk of the design work, the team behind High Isolde were able to get the project off the ground so that they were able to complete it in the five-year time frame. Once it was financed, actually building the accelerator became High Isolde's next big challenge. So one of the main challenges, technical challenges, the project had to face was really to uh, demonstrate the possibility to use copper um, cavities uh, coated with the niobium film as a, a superconducting material. This is not the common uh, way of building, of uh, constructing superconducting uh, uh, accelerating structures, but this is one way which CERN has uh, excelled in. CERN is the inventor of this technology. This is a technology we applied uh, at the uh, times of LEP, the um, predecessor of the LHC uh, accelerator, where it's, uh, we use this kind of technology for the accelerating cavities. And basically what we had to develop and prove within the project that we could basically use this technology, but with a different, adapted to a different geometrical configuration of the uh, uh, cavities. So this was one of the main challenges. This is basically in the project where we had the most uncertainties 
and risks, uh, not only financial risk, but also technical risks. The first cryo module for High Isolde was just a prototype, but it was also going to be used as the first cryo module when the machine began to take physics data. We are quite happy today to have uh, achieved what we have uh, achieved, I mean to have gone so far in the project and in deployment of, these, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, superconducting accelerator, but not all uh, uh, went, uh, uh, how do you say, as, uh, as expected. So we didn't have enough time basically to test uh, offline the superconducting structure and we actually used the, uh, the machine itself, the physics, the operation of the of the accelerator to basically validate and uh, test. We had to rev uh, revise uh, some of our uh, designs, in particularly uh, for what concerns the uh, radio frequency couplers, which we had overlooked. This meant that we had to dismount our cryo module, bring it back to our clean room facility, uh, um, re uh, re engineer the thermalization reinstall it and this we had about four months we made use of the uh, Christmas shutdown or uh, winter shutdown of the Isolde facility basically to do all this and we were back online four months later. Certainly the pressure is the physics behind that is waiting to be done and it can only be done at Isolde because there is no other facility in the world where we can reach the same number of isotopes and the energy range. Um, furthermore, if we want to compare with LHC experiments, we have to think that in nuclear physics the time scale is shorter, the experiments are normally done in a period between 10 days to 15 days, the analysis takes about one year. So that means that delaying time put even more time pressure because our time scale is smaller. Isolde is a unique facility and High Isolde ensures its status in the scientific community. Upgrading and adding to the facility is a demonstration of the motivation and interest from Isolde's wide and enthusiastic user base. With the further development of High Isolde, the facility ensures its place as one of the best sites for nuclear physics in the world.